today I'm painting in Art Rage. Hi everyone, Steve Elliott here again. Um, this is a photo I took actually on my birthday. I went for a walk into town with my two daughters and the light was absolutely stunning. You see these long shadows on there. And I wanted to do a painting where the brush strokes were just really bold and you could see all of those branches being painted as sort of sing almost single brush strokes scraped across the canvas. So there was only one app that I could really paint this in and that was Art Rage. So I began painting this in Art Rage on the iPad and then um, once I'd got to what I considered to be a finished painting, I exported it as a script um, to run in the Art Rage on the PC, just so I could um, produce a much larger uh, image. Because I find when I'm working on the iPad, if I keep the size down to sort of A4, A5 size, I get much better br brush strokes and you can see all the bristles in the brushes and, and it, it looks much more natural. And then to enlarge it on the PC and then sort of finish off and do the detailed work, that seems to me um, a better way of doing it. So, as I say, I uh, painted this mostly on the PC and at this point it looks as almost as though it could be uh, a, a snow scene uh, because of all the blue in there and I wanted this to have lots of uh, colour and yellows and purples and things in so I begin by painting in the sky and uh, the foreground and then painting over them and you can see the way I treated the buildings in the background that um, I used the actual sky colour that I put on first to actually be part of the buildings. I didn't sort of block them out. I just used that to incorporate that into the painting. Also, I didn't go crazy using too many layers. I, I see there I've got a layer for the people and then they flashed up, so a layer for the trees. But I felt that um, when you're using the oil paint, brush in art rage you need to smudge the paint and brush it around and if you create too many layers you can't do that you can't smear the paint so well so i sort of tried different things and i've, I've got the palette knife in there smudging the paint and i didn't like that i felt that felt uh to i've used it to effect in other paintings and it's worked great but in this one it just wasn't cutting it so uh, i decided to work with paint brushes it's mostly the thick oil paint brush uh, for those that are interested and I go a little bit crazy here with the branches I think and so I decide to start blocking out the shapes inside the negative shapes if you like or the light shapes that or, or the pavement that is um, surrounding the actual shadows and I liked that effect i like the fact instead of painting the brush the, uh, the branch shadows on in one go i like the effect i got by painting the shape around the branches so you can see i'm adding lots of color in here i'm using browns and uh, sort of ochres and i've got a little bit of bright green over to the right hand side and the oranges and, and the tiny, tiny little bit of red on the figure sort of draw your attention to those. But you notice I've, uh, the branches, they lead you into the painting and you could sort of go up the tree and then come back down the, the branches again and just sort of keep um, w working your way round and round the painting. So the composition, I didn't have to do anything. It just worked really, really well. Um, I really like what was happening there. And then I decided I wanted some more colour in the trees. So you could imagine that being um, branches and twigs and things that have made the, the sky appear darker. And then I do something a bit radical. I put an outline around the figures 
Now, that is a technique I've picked up from painting in the style of. I would never have done that in a painting previously to doing painting in the style of. But when you're not doing um, a realistic painting like this, you know, you know, you could almost say it's abstract. You, you've, you can do what you want, really. You've got a lot more leeway. And have you noticed that I've treated the branches of the trees different to the shadows? I've used a different painting technique um, for the two. I'm now in Art Rage, by the way. I've just moved over into Art, Art Rage because when I opened up the painting sort of full size, I've got a fairly decent monitor, size monitor on my PC. I, I, I'm not sure how big it is, maybe 27 inch, something like that. So... So from going from seeing the full painting on an iPad to a large screen, I just felt it needed more work and more detail. It looked a little bit crude from the iPad version. So I went in and started um, working on the shadows uh, and painting them in again. And I go a little bit crazy. And as you can see in a while, I'll, I'll just put lots and lots of branches in. Uh, here we go. It's almost like a uh, marble effect that you would get on. Uh, I used to be a decorator and I did decorative paint techniques and I used to imitate marbles and wood grains and things like that. And it's looking a little bit like a marble effect. So at some point I decide that is not going to do and I start painting in the branches again. And... I decided I, I really didn't like the way that the branches were painted appeared. I much preferred it when I painted in the negative shapes around the shadows. So in a minute or two, I will go back in that. Anyway, getting back to what I was going to say, and I got distracted, and I do that a lot, I've noticed in these videos. I'll start talking about something, then go off on one, and then forget. But anyway, the... Um, trees I, I used a different technique on those because i wanted them to look um as though the branches had been painted and uh, were clearly branches as opposed to the shadows and i felt that the two techniques i used the negative painting on the ground look how messy that's looking now and uh, the branches in the trees using the two techniques separated them off quite nicely they, they could they, they, you could have easily uh, sort of taking the view that they needed to be painted in the same way to keep uh, a balance throughout the old painting. But um, I didn't think so. So I, w I went for doing it this way. Now, look how messy the branches are. I think that's way overpainted at this point. So I'm going to have to fix it. Uh, I hope I start fixing it soon because it's driving me mad now looking at it. But no, I'm still at this point. I think what I was doing there, I was trying to blend the branches together and the colours so it appeared. Um, it was it was looking a bit messy and um, overworked. And I wanted to just sort of blend those out a bit, those sort of main branches, and get them looking as though it had been painted with uh, a forcefulness, I suppose, and, and a sureness of just putting the brush stroke on rather than gingerly dabbing and feeling the way. I think that's what I was trying to do there. And here we go. Now I'm, I'm happy. I'm getting happy because I decided that, whoa, there's way too many smaller uh, branches and things that need to be dealt with. So... I'm so happy now looking at this again that I am painting those out. This was a real fun painting to do. I say that a lot because, you know, painting is fun, isn't it? And I just love doing this. This is one of my favourite paintings I've done for a while. Um, I will be making this available. Uh, I haven't done yet, but shortly I think I'll be putting that uh, on... Um, my site so you can get a copy of it if you want not you know not trying to pressurize anybody that's not what this is all about 
But uh, anyway, that's it. That's kind of pretty much the paint end of the painting. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have, thumbs up as always is much appreciated. Helps me out a lot. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing because I have lots of videos like this all about digital painting and I would love to be sharing them with you. So hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye.